There he goes. Foster into the open field. Kelly unloads quickly. This time, D.J. Foster, 50. Foster takes it, cuts it back. Foster with a burst. D.J. Foster breaks a tackle down the right sideline. Third rushing touchdown for D.J. Foster. Hits him in mid-stride, and D.J. Foster spins for a touchdown. He hangs on. Touchdown, Arizona State. It's D.J. Foster. Oh, he was huge coming out of the backfield this season ago. A threat at the wide receiver spot. He was certainly scary. Only player in the country with at least 1,000 receiving or 1,000 rushing yards and 600 receiving yards is the senior from ASU. DJ Foster is with us. DJ, so I, I was just on the on the phone a few minutes ago with Mike Norvell, your offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. He was talking about how explosive you look. So is it wide receiver or running back for you or a little bit of both again this year? Right now, during the spring, it's a, a lot of wide receiver. Um, trying to just take this time to kind of develop that craft and be out wide and getting, get, getting a chance to go against Lloyd Carrington. I mean, one of the best corners in the Pac-12. I mean, me and him are battling every day. So, I mean, right now, it's just focus on receiver, trying to develop a technique out there. Uh, Todd Graham, I saw a quote from him. He called you his prime time guy. What kind of pressure is that for you heading into the season? Uh, it's not. I mean, he's he's been on all my side since the moment I stepped on this campus. Um, he's always been trying to just trying to motivate me, setting high standards, high goals, and stuff. So I mean, I just try to go out there and be a playmaker that I, that I know I am, and just do the best I can and be a leader and just kind of help my team win. Mention leadership. You're a senior this year. How mm -hmm. have you embraced that role as being one of this one of this team's main guys, not only on the field but leading off it? Yeah, it's amazing how fast it's going by, and just I mean, just. How I talk to my roommates and Mike and a lot of guys, I mean, a lot of my close friends are also seniors and stuff, and just how fast and the chance and the opportunity that we know that we have one more year to get to the, the level that we want to be at and just get to the accomplishments and the, all of our goals that we set out since we stepped as on freshmen on, on campus and stuff. So, I mean, we just got to just keep striving to be vocal and just kind of lead the younger guys and just show them the kind of the right path right now. You mentioned roommates. You mentioned Berkovici. You guys mm -hmm. are roommates. What's it like to, to be in close quarters with him as a roommate? <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. It's a good time. It's my brother. I, I love him and stuff. But, uh, I mean, it's tough being a receiver and stuff now. I mean, he, he'll be mad at me one day at practice. I may drop the ball or miss the route. And, uh, I mean, I'll hear it from my coaches, and I also got to hear it from him when I uh, go home and stuff. So, but it's good. Uh, it's a great relationship. I mean, it's helped me a lot make that transition knowing uh, my roommates, the quarterback. So, I mean, I can go home and I, we can talk about certain routes and certain coverages and stuff like that. DJ, I'm confused all of a sudden here. You, you drop balls. Isn't it just a bad pass? Isn't a bad throw from Berkovich? Yeah, you don't drop that's what anything. I told him. Exactly. That's what I told him. I said, that's your fault, man. It, it wasn't it. I, I got two hands on it. I mean, you, you throwing it to the wrong side. I mean, but uh, <laughs> he, uh, he's definitely a different type of quarterback, and I'm just still getting used to him. I mean, that, he's, got a, he's got a heck of an arm. I mean, he throws it. It's coming in. It's coming in hot. So, I mean, it's, he's a great quarterback, and I, I love being a part of this offense right now. Can I ask what pillow talk is like with Berkovici? You said pillow talk. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, it's interesting. I mean, he. Uh, I mean, we try to when we get outside these, the football, the football locker room and stuff. I mean, we we like to talk about a lot of other stuff and just kind of get away. I mean, he's definitely more than just my teammate. I mean, he's my brother and stuff. I got Jordan Simone and Ellis Jefferson are my other two uh, roommates and stuff. So I mean, we're we're a close unit and stuff. So we we always got each other's back. We just talk about life in general. Well, the cool thing for Berkovici is he got some burn at the quarterback spot when Taylor Kelly was hurt last year. Those mm -hmm. two guys seem like they're different. I've had opportunities to talk with both of them. Taylor Kelly seems like the quiet type, doesn't really care about yeah. his hair, for example. Berkovici, <laughs> he's, got, he's got it under control when he came mm -hmm. on Football Weekly with us during the course of this season. Their leadership style, how different is it? Oh, it's different. I mean, TK was more of a, a leader by example. I mean, he wouldn't go out there and be screaming at guys left and right. I mean, he was more of a calm, collect, cool kind of guy. And uh, he'll go out there and he'll, he'll pull you aside and talk to you and stuff. And then Burko, on the other hand, he's, very, he's a way more vocal leader. He, he's not afraid to uh, share his opinion. And uh, I think that's kind of what we need right now with a lot of young guys on our team. I mean, they need that leader to step up and be, sometimes have to be told and stuff. I mean, so, I mean, he's doing that right now. And uh, I think it's working out great for our team. In terms of that wide receiver spot, we spent so much time last year talking about Jalen Strong, and for good reason. He's going to be playing on Sundays. Cameron Smith, though, mm -hmm. he goes down because of a knee injury. We expect you to have a big year. Besides you, though, who in that wide receiving core do you think can help pick up some of that production that's lost because Jalen Strong's not going to be there and because Cameron's not playing? Yeah, um, I mean, we got a lot of guys. Gary Chambers, Ellis Jefferson, Fred Gamage. And we got, those are veterans on our team as well. I mean, they've been here for a couple of years now, and uh, 
I mean, they, they've had a terrific spring. I mean, Gary's been there, been here for four years now. He's been making plays left and right and stuff. So, I mean, as a unit, I mean, as a leader, I'm trying to just get all of our guys to kind of step up. And we know losing Jalen and now losing Cam, and we, we have to step up as a receiving unit and stuff. And uh, I think everyone's up to the challenge. I mean, we're working hard, pushing each other every day to kind of be there for our, for our offense and stuff. DJ, we love talking to Todd Graham. He's one of the more entertaining coaches mm -hmm. for us here at the Pac-12 Networks, and he's always setting goals and motivating. So I'm going to ask you, what would characterize a successful season for you on the football field this year? A Heisman Trophy, uh, being a Heisman Trophy winner. I mean, every year, that's, that's my goal. I mean, every year, Coach Graham, me and him sit down and meet, and he asks me what I, what, what's my accomplishments, what I want to do. I mean, all that yardage and all this receiving catches, rushes, I mean, that's all great. But, I mean, I just want to be the best player I can be and, uh, and just be a great teammate and just have that, have that highest goal of winning the Heisman. And just, that continues to push me every week throughout the season and stuff just to be the playmaker for my team and for this team and just be a leader out there. Well, I know Sun Devils fans would absolutely love to see you in New York City. DJ, nothing but the best of this upcoming season. We're wishing you a ton of luck, and we can't wait to see you on the football field. Thank you so much, guys. It's been a pleasure.